Okay, good afternoon. I'm glad to present ARM's effort for DBTK and the future plan. I will go through the, what we have done back uh, shortly before and uh, what we are doing currently. And in the near future, what we want to push for upstream. Okay. okay, I will go through this list. The first one is relaxed memory ordering, and the second one is sync versus atomic built-ins. The third one is about uh, wait for event and send event. These are new instructions from uh, ARM v8.0. The fourth one is uh, atomic instructions introduced in uh, v8.0. One. The, the fifth one is near optimization, and the last two is uh, about uh, build system and documentation for ARM64 and uh, DTS test cases and our internal CI. Uh, for C11 memory ordering, uh, you know ARM64 is a relaxed memory ordering model. That means the program order might be broken for performance optimization. This was done by hardware or by compiler. This uh, memory reordering is uh, most of the time is transparent to programmers, but we still have some use cases that the program, program order should be kept to make things correct, especially for use cases in multi-core or multi-thread environment. That's, that's why memory fences were used in DBTK. So, but generally, these memory fences will degrade overall performance because it uh, uh, ban reordering to make full use of uh, out-of-order execution model to boost performance. So what can we do? So what we can do is uh, to use less restrictive memory ordering model as, as less, restrictive mo less restrictive as possible to mitigate this degradation to fully improve the performance. Uh, so far we have done such optimization to use less restrictive memory ordering for some components. The patches were upstream. For KNI component, both kernel and uh, user space libraries, and uh, for RT RIN, and uh, for R RT hash. Uh, in the future, we wanted to improve uh, for what IO we RIN implementation, also to use this less restrictive memory ordering. What we have done for this optimization is to, we have done three things. Maybe the first one is to move or remove the memory fences from the wrong places. The second one is just talk about, it's lessen the barriers to make them as weak as possible. The correctness is, is required, but uh, we should lessen the barriers to boost performance. The third one is uh, ensure correctness. This, this correctness means it uh, can run multi-core safe by synchronizing to correct points. This is about uh, uh, relaxed memory ordering optimization and the bug fixes. The second one is sync and uh, atomic built-ins. Currently, uh, I, I see a lot of sync built-ins were used in DBTK. I de disassembled this uh, sync built-in APIs and found this they were translated to full memory ordering. So if we replace this sync built-in with uh, atomic built-in, it can be replaced, the full memory barrier can be replaced by high performance one-way barrier. This is helpful to, to performance. Our benchmarking test result shows constant improvements 
for we have selected a read write read lock read write lock and a spin lock on two on 64 platforms these are the comparison diagram for the performance improvement by this new atomic uh, uh, implementation for read write and spin lock uh, spin lock implementation the third one is a uh, uh, wait for event and a send event Wait for event will suspend execution on the course when it uh, attempted to, to access the shared lock. And if the lock were held also by other processing engines, then we can call wait for event to make the core enter into low, low power mode. This can avoid stressful memory accesses because if we want to to make the maybe spin lock or read write lock or ring implementation to scale up be much better. Uh, this SEV is, uh, as the lane suggest, is a send event ex explicitly to break WFE from the low, bring it up into activation. We have uh, re implemented a spin lock and the read write lock and the ring implementation using these uh, uh, new instructions. On, some, on one of our ARM64 platforms, it boosted in our benchmarking. The, the performance were boosted by three times. The, the real performance gains is dependent maybe on a lot of other factors. I just used the uh, maybe RT, uh, maybe spin lock, auto test, read write lock, auto test, and uh, ring auto test, performance auto test to benchmark. So uh, we, we need uh, uh, ARMS partners to join efforts to do uh, real use cases, benchmarking, like maybe as a forward or other use cases. This, uh, the, the right picture is uh, about the, uh, the flow to, to use these instructions to replace the continuous polling. The, the original code is continuous polling, the, maybe the, the log address. If it was held, it will continue polling. This can, maybe this uh, introduced a lot of uh, stressful memory access and uh, cause memory subsystem to, to block or maybe to degrade the performance. These patches are in, uh, in internal review. I wanted to push uh, for upstream very soon. This one is about uh, new uh, atomic instructions introduced in uh, 8.1. These this, uh, atomic instructions is to replace the old load ex uh, exclusive and store exclusive uh, instructions. It can maybe redu reduce the instruction sequence, sequences and the retry into a single in instruction. This one is about uh, Neo optimization. Neo instructions is ARM version of SIMD. And uh, we have done Neo optimization for S3 forward example and for internic PMD. And the Manalox PMD also have, they have done this by themselves to use uh, new uh, instructions. We, this is not a small portion of the whole DBDK source code. So we need to identify more uh, components to use the new uh, optimization and do benchmarking to see the real performance gain, gains. This one is uh, uh, build system and uh, documentation. We will uh, cover some maybe make file and GCC clan, uh, build tools and the tool chains and the method and the ninja. We will also uh, submit patches for ARM64 user guides and API reference guide, such kind of things. This one is uh, we, have, uh, we have identified some DTS test cases suitable for ARM64 platforms. Oh, sorry. 
and uh, we enabled these uh, test cases running on ARM64 platforms and in integrated this into uh, ARM internal, internal CI. Uh, in the near future, we want to add more test cases to increase the test cases coverage rate and maybe in the future to, to, integ to integrate into the public CI. So to wrap up, the key takeaways is a relaxed memory model and the examples of optimizations in the Git log history. You can find the uh, re relevant patches. And uh, all the new instructions are supported to, to, break, uh, to bring more performant and scalable, more scalable uh, read write knock, spin knock, and RT ring or and hash. This, uh, this uh, performance gains can help these implementations to scale, scale up much better than before on large systems. And the third one is uh, near optimization examples. We will continue working on this in the near future. Okay, thanks. Any questions? I'm open to any questions. And uh, Hong Pa is uh, beside a microphone, so if I can't answer, maybe he can help me. Because we have been uh, closely working together on the same patches and the same topics, he is heavily helping reviews my patches. So, any questions? Uh, this, uh, these patches are in the uh, state of internal review. After we get uh, internal review and approved, I will push for upstream. So maybe you can take it and test it and uh, any comments and feedback are warmly welcome. You can, if you look, look, look back, you can see some uh, performance ga games is uh, very significant maybe three times or at least maybe 20% or 30%. Can look at this picture. Okay. I have a question. So if you have <coughs> more like fine grained uh, code, um, the more you do relaxed, the more places you have to put sync, right? So yes. Is so is that not going to reduce performance overall? Because uh, if you do not, right? Yes, if you use relaxed memory ordering, then the compiler and uh, the hardware can run these instructions more simultaneously and concurrently. It can, it only need to run one by one. But if so you're that, that means it can be run uh, in parallel. The True. concurrency is, uh, is much uh, is, uh, increased. Okay. okay, okay, I got it, thank you. Yes, if you are using rela uh, restrictive memory ordering, it, uh, it can't be reordered. Any more questions? So the spin log with the wake up. Okay. Um, is the wake up deterministic? Is it's always uh, checking this the same time or? Uh? Okay, good question. Actually, this is related to ARM implementation. Let me see. Okay, uh, sorry. The you the whole flow is like this. Firstly, if you check the lock, it is held by others. So, for example, you can get the global variable is 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 one. Then you can call wait for event. Then this call can enter into low power mode. Oh, okay, the first step is a, is a, is a load exclu exclusive to load this address into L1 cache. So after this instruction was run, the, the exclusive monitor will monitor this entry. So when the other side the other PE store release. That means it releases the lock. It will trigger the clearance 
of the executive uh, monitor. This uh, clearance of executive monitor will generate SEV to the WFE. Then WFE will be broken. It will be brought up into action. It, then it can be try to, to get the lock. That's the flow. I, I don't know if I get it. So the, the answer is that uh, the wake up always take the same time? No. The, the, because you, when you run WFE, you will not uh, run, it, 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 you will sleep. It's like a okay. sleep state. So what, what is the worst case? Worst case? The, the worst case, yeah. No, no, no watch worst cases. This, okay. So it will continue uh, sleeping. Or maybe, the worst case, maybe it can be uh, waking up spuriously by other events, not by uh, or release or lock release, but maybe by other events. In that case, you just need to retry because you, you have to retry after you uh, reactivated from the SNP. But the, the core, the, the processor is in the in a lowest stage of, energy, of execution, so you need to put that core in a, a the normal. This was, uh, was uh, wake up event was, uh, was uh, generated by the uh, exclusive monitor, by the system side, by hardware. understand your question here. So uh, are you talking about uh, when we go into the uh, um, sleep state and if we have to come back up, how long it's going to take? Okay. So, uh, so far, uh, you know, in our benchmarks, we don't uh, see that as being significant. And what we see here is by uh, using these instructions, we are reducing the number of memory accesses we are not pulling for on that variable anymore. And that reduces the amount of uh, transactions on the bus and uh, uh, the memory accesses. So that's how we are gaining. And uh, we don't see that sleeping and waking up as a uh, bottleneck. So, so I'm saying that because okay. uh, you know there are uh, systems where, so, for example, real time is required with deterministic behavior. Sometimes you, I think Intel has this problem. You can put the the uh, core in a lower state, but sometimes to put that core back to the uh, faster state takes longer than expected. And if you have this kind of uncertainty, then uh, it's a problem for real time systems. And I was wondering if you could have the same problem with. Uh, with this. Uh, so we can suggest on, the further, on looking at the time, we can take that question offline. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for your question. Thank you.